everyone, welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. I'm Heather, your host. Uh, this week is a little different. We're on a road trip, so we are driving up north to Monterey. We've got the week off for spring break. We got the car all packed, we got the snacks, we're all ready to go. Uh, the coast road is closed in places. It's nice and sunny today, but it's been raining all weekend. So we have some washed out roads along Highway 1. So unfortunately, we won't be able to stop at all the points along Big Sur that we were hoping to see. Uh, we, we can go south from Monterey, so we'll probably take one of our days up there and head south. But I don't know that we're going to be able to get to the lighthouse or McWay Falls or Pfeiffer State Beach or any of the stuff that we wanted to see. But anyway, I hope you come along for the journey and I hope you enjoy this week and I'll give you a recap at the end. That first night the hall opened its doors and the world flowed in to see men bleed. Denham and Regal got to watch from the highest rungs of the ladder in the furthest corner of the great hall. Pretty. I forgot which room I picked. <laughs> I picked the one with the double windows. In the bed, we got little louvered blinds out here. Definitely hear the ocean. And we got nice chairs here with this spectacular view. And you can see the main house as well. The beautiful Monterey Pines. And then these cute little window seats with the window looking over at Lover's Point where everybody's currently having fun. Wow. Fancy, fancy. So the reason we are staying at this hotel, this fancy hotel, is because five years ago when we were visiting here, we took a walk along that trail you can see down there by the water and just thought oh there's a bed and breakfast right here like it would be so great to stay there and uh it's pricey but we saved up so that we could have this trip and that's mainly why we're only here monday through thursday or friday is because we could not afford the weekend prices at this place but it's just beautiful and to have that view every day and the sound of the waves every night and the birds and yeah it was just wonderful and I'm so glad we made that decision it was totally worth the price and the breakfast wasn't bad either are at Seven Gables Inn the first morning. Uh, we got a few people out there on the beach and a few people in the water. Uh, early risers doing their exercise and then we had a 
a sea lion, uh, sea lion, a sea otter out here in the morning. We got the binoculars out, got a really good shot. Just a beautiful morning, and we're kind of north facing. So the sun rose over there, woke us up in the morning. We had the beautiful sound of the waves all night, and now we're going to go down to breakfast. Welcome. Good morning. So we just got back from breakfast. We got our window right in the uh, table, right in the window. So I'll share that with you here. Uh, lovely. A person offered to take our picture, which is very sweet. And really good breakfast. Nice variety of eggs and hash browns and cereal, toast, fresh fruit, um, oatmeal, still cut oatmeal, which was really good, and then um, some cereal options. So a little bit of everything for everybody, which is very nice. Uh, and now I think we are going to head down there and just maybe stick our feet in the water for a little bit. And then on this side over here, you've got a little area that juts out, so I think we're going to take the binoculars over there and go see what we can see. Looks like a nice, calm day to kayak too. Got a whole grove of trees over there. There's some sea otters out there. I'll try and get a close up. My husband's on camcorder duty with the zoom lens.
Whenever we go on vacation, I love to hit the local yarn store or fabric store and just see what they have and pick out something for myself as a little reminder of the trip. So came to Monarch Knitting, um, just a really big store. I was very surprised at how large this was inside. I have lots of the wool in the gang, which was nice to see in person and uh, just a really wide variety of yarn. I was just overwhelmed at <laughs> the variety and a very cute store. I did look at this tweed. Um, I wish I had remembered that at the end when I was ready to pick out my yarn because that color would have been better suited <laughs> than the one I picked out. Uh, yeah, but just lots of fun to look at everything. They also had a selection of project bags, so I had to check those out. And they do make them themselves. So they've got um, the strawberry ones and then these ones, and they're about $79 to $100 each. So, um, you know, that's good news for me if somebody's willing to pay $80 to $100 for a project bag. And they didn't look that much larger or anything than the ones I made, although some of them did have leather. And I love this logo. This is such a cute logo. Sea change fibers. I'll have to look them up because that was really cute. And in fact, I, I picked out two skeins because, you know, uh, wool is very pricey. So I picked out these two skeins, which I really love. And uh, then we went to the coffee house and bookshop, which was really cute. thinking of get oh okay, so this is the one I'm listening to right now okay. I still have 21 hours left on this book yeah, that's massive. Um, it's interesting but it's not really making me want to read more it's an interesting storyline I just for some reason I'm not really getting into it I'm not sure why little cat I'm at the lake well, I could add to my bookstore mug collection. Although that's not as interesting. <laughs> oh, Bill Bryson. Which one is that? Short history of nearly everything. I love him. If you guys have not read Bill Bryson before, I highly recommend. He's um, a nonfiction author. He's very good. All Masters of the Air. That's a series right now. So this was not the season to be here at the Butterfly Sanctuary. Uh, they travel through here October through March, so we just missed them. <laughs> but it was still a beautiful area to walk around and learn about the monarch butterflies and their migration. Uh, so this whole grove was set up by the city of Pacific Grove. They purchased the land and planted the trees and everything. And I believe this was in... What year was it established? I'll put it on the screen if I can figure that out. So we saw a few butterflies flitting around, but obviously nothing like in the migration time. They're hanging on to the, um, the leaves 
of all the trees and a bird. Do you guys see the bird? Okay, here we are on the 17 mile drive. Go see all the goodies and then we have a charcuterie dinner we're gonna eat picnic style on the beach the actual beach facing west where we can see the sunset tonight. <laughs> we have several points of interest we are going to visit on the way and then on one of these spots there's um, the lone Monterey Pine hanging out on a rock. I think that's towards the end. Maybe Cypress Point Lookout. <clears throat> Harbor seals. Oh, here we go. The Lone Cypress. For more than 250 years, the world famous Lone Cypress has braved the elements atop a rocky pedestal overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Known as Midway Point on the original 17 mile drive, this iconic tree has been the logo for Pebble Beach Resorts since its founding in 1919. We are driving through the world famous Pebble Beach Golf Course, which I think has two different 18 hole courses. But this is where the US Masters happens. That's pretty. Yeah, those are some waves. We have no waves where we are. Probably because we're in a more protected area. We even got surfers. Those are some nice waves. Choice waves, dude. This is one of the most beautiful drives you can take. It costs about $12 per car, but well worth the price to do this drive. There's all these points along that you can stop and watch and take your time. And it was just a beautiful day for it. The sun was out, it was glorious. And then we headed down to the beach to have our charcuterie picnic, which was really fun, but as you will see, no sunset. <laughs> that dog wants to play catch. He just ran after the ball. She could barely hold him. Look at him. <laughs> that sound is a dog, not a kid. Look at that corgi. He's so cute. We got some Jesus rays. 
We still got a bet going. Are we gonna get the full sun into the ocean? Or are there more clouds below these ones? Stay tuned to find out. Well, it looks like the clouds go all the way down. <clears throat> Border Collie. That was the breed. So we got like two Huskies or Malamutes, a Border Collie. It's probably a gold, uh, Labrador. And I don't know what the other guy is. Lots of dogs tonight. I also smuggled in some red wine from Trader Joe's. It's pretty good. Try and keep myself warm. I got my scarf and my hat and a sweater and a jacket and I still feel like I'm going to be cold. Okay, morning of day two. It is very cloudy, so I'm glad we ran around yesterday and did everything. <laughs> this looks like the storm's coming in faster. We have a little seagull friend who smelled the coffee and wants some breakfast. <laughs> We've also got an otter out there. I just saw a head pop up and some swimmers already. Jeez. So it looks like the storm is gonna hit tomorrow. So. Um, we'll still try and drive around today, see what we can see, and then do the aquarium tomorrow since it'll be rainy. But I hope everybody else doesn't have the same plan. He has a visitor. He has a friend. We're going to wind up with like 10 of them on the roof here. One of the tight pools you can explore. It's the kissing rocks. Those are cool. Here we are at the kissing rocks. Maybe we'll get a good wave crashing up.
are at China Rock, I believe. Those are the two China Rocks. I don't know why. I'll have to look it up. Um, so we've got just a little bit more on Highway 1 before the closure. So we're just going to kind of drive on Highway 1 and see. It's already very, very cloudy and we had some sprinkles at lunch. So i um, not sure what we're getting up to for the rest of the day. And we're tired. We're beat from yesterday. We did uh, over 10,000 steps. So that's a lot for me. But very pretty. We've got a lot of things washed out, like this trail down here is washed out, or at least closed because of the storm. Here we are at Garapata State Park, State Beach. And it's just beautiful with the rolling hills and the fog just cutting off the tops. And these beautiful flowers, I don't know what these are. Beautiful coastline with my windblown Monterey Pine. Hey, that one. I'm not wearing the best shoes for this one, so we'll see how far we get. Sorry, this is so shaky, folks. I'm using the regular camera instead of the GoPro. I didn't think I was doing any more walks today, so I didn't break it out. Interesting. So up ahead is the road closure just after the bridge is where the road got washed out and we're really just letting locals in. So one of the lanes is still open but they have to fix this whole road. So this is as far south as we could go today but really wonderful that we got to go on that little hike at Garapata State Park and those calla lilies which somebody must have just randomly planted there Maybe it was an art installation, I don't know. Next up is Cannery Row. Uh, beautiful day, but rainy. That's one of the reasons why I picked this hotel is because I knew the weather might not be great at the time we were going. And I figured at least I had a wonderful view and I could sit in the hotel room and crochet in the rain, which I did actually get to do. by Monterey Bay Aquarium just to see if I'm right or not <laughs> because my theory is that everybody else had the same plan of coming to the aquarium on the rainy day because it's indoors and it looks like I'm right. <laughs> That's the line to get into the aquarium. That's crazy. It just opened, well it opened two hours ago. So this is the line two hours into the day. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. I feel vindicated in my decision <laughs> to skip the aquarium now. I don't have to feel bad about the idea. Oh my goodness. So there's not much to do at Cannery Row except walk around and look at all the cute shops. So. We spent a little time doing that and going and seeing the view. Um, I was thinking of getting lunch down here, but everything was just so touristy. I didn't really want to stop for lunch. And 
trying to figure out what else to do with this day. Um, and then I thought about, oh, there's Fisherman's Wharf. But that was um, pretty rainy and very uncrowded. So we did head down to Fisherman's Wharf, but couldn't even get to where the sea lions were. But we did pick up some some treats, some uh, some nut brittle and some caramel popcorn. Uh, that's how they get you. They make the caramel popcorn and it wafts out into the walkway and then everybody comes in, flocks in and buys the caramel popcorn. Fresh caramel popcorn. Now we can do it correctly. Fresh caramel popcorn. Yum yum. I'm getting caught in the rain. If you like fresh caramel popcorn, <laughs> you're getting caught in the rain. Just can't get over this view. I know I'm probably gonna have too many clips out this window. Uh, in this video, I will try and limit the amount of times I'm showing the same thing, but oh, these waves are just beautiful. We've got two friends now. <laughs> waves down here as well. It's just going off today. Uh, so we're about to go down to breakfast and then we gotta pack up, pack up the car, check out and head down to Solvang today. I don't know that it's really gonna rain more. It just kind of rains in spurts. We're used to Southern California where if it says 0.03 or 0.06 inches of rain in a hour, we're used to that slowly happening over the hour. Here it's like 0.03 inches of rain, boom, dumped. <laughs> you got the peanut gallery over here. Uh, so 0.3 inches dumped right away and then nothing for the rest of the hour. So it's a little different than uh, we're used to. It's just beautiful. I could look out this window every day. I'm so happy we got this room. Even though it's up three flights of stairs, the stairs are killing me. My knee is killing me. I forgot to bring my, uh, my joint juice, the chondroitin glucosamine juice that I put in my shakes because I wasn't making shakes so I didn't bring it uh, but just a beautiful room and a fun time here this is like one of their largest rooms and I'm glad I got it because it has that whole other window we wait for this wave to crash one more wave one more wave I can't I can't help myself <clears throat> boom 
some big waves going off here. So this whole area down here is where I've been stretching in the morning. And I just love these little, these little bench seats are so cute. The wind's really whipping through here now. So you get all the rain on the window. You can't see much, but it's just really rough out there. The sea otters are still surfing the waves. I like to pick unique places to stay just because I feel like they're more fun and memorable than regular hotel rooms, especially after all the different Airbnb ooh, Airbnbs I've stayed at are very unique. So we'll just take a few more waves. Oh, just massive waves hitting that rock. <clears throat> I think the other rock, oh, the other rock's down here by this tree. That's got a nice angle to it. When the waves go over, it really crashes. I'm enjoying the ones out here on the point, though. But this is the other rock. And the one car parked in the entire parking area is in my shop. It's funny how now when I'm filming stuff, I think of... Why can't everybody just cooperate with my YouTube video and not talk during the sunset or not back up their car or run their engine or play their loud music while I'm trying to film something? So anytime that there's no sound in these videos, it's because I had to cut it out or it was too windy. I wish I could include all of the sound all of the time. She put her mind to Late night hours up the hill Serving coffee to strangers Talking about revenue She kept dreaming of a world Big enough for everyone But she knew it must rain before it grows She kept dreaming of the day Okay, well, we didn't really like our hotel really tired of crappy beds so we are gonna head home instead of staying and solving for two days um, I kind of have a lot going on and it would just be nice to sleep in our own bed tonight um, unfortunately we can't even have dinner here because we're full from lunch so we'll just get dinner on the way home we're already halfway home at this point anyway and everything's already loaded in the car. So the idea of unloading everything and sleeping on a crappy bed for two more nights does not outweigh the um, pleasure of touring around, uh, touring around solving. Plus, as you will see earlier, I got to meet my YouTuber and um, bought some books. We already bought some yarn and I went to a fabric store 
and bought some fabric so I don't feel like I really need to do that here um, those were two of the things we were gonna do here and I really didn't have a plan other than the sausage garden so sorry sausage garden we won't be seeing you today Hey friends, thanks for joining me this week. We had a wonderful time up in Monterey. Uh, we were really in Pacific Grove, but I just called it Monterey. Uh, but as you will have seen, we decided to be fluid. This trip was all about being fluid with the weather and the road closures and the aquarium and everything. And uh, as you will have just seen, when we get to solving, it just, it wasn't gonna happen. Um, after staying in that super nice hotel room, the crappy hotel room just wasn't going to cut it. So we canceled our reservation and decided just to drive the whole way home, which was kind of nice to sleep in our own bed and have the couch and the ottoman and the TV, you know, all, all your creature comforts that you forget about when, you, <laughs> when you're living in it. But as soon as you leave it for something else, you realize how comfortable you've made your house. So I will feel better knowing everything's done today. I'm ready to go for the week and I have my lunches and you know everything all planned out but I wanted to share with you all the goodies we got so let's do a haul my bag got smushed in my luggage but uh, the first place we went was monarch knitting and we will as crocheters we will be magnanimous and ignore the fact that it has knitting in the title and not crochet but it is a yarn store. So I wanted to get some yarn to commemorate the trip and make something. So we got, can't really see that. So what we got was, if you can see that, Craggy Tweed, which is very cute logo. Um, so this is 15% NEP, what does that mean? And 85% Superwash Merino. It's just got this beautiful texture to it. It's got these little knobbly bits. And I've been looking for a tweed to make something with for a while. And we also established that I don't have any blue projects. So I got some blue tweed. It looks more like robin's egg blue than like nautical blue. Uh, they just didn't have one that was kind of nautical blue. But this is great. So I got two skeins of this that we will make a scarf out of. I'm thinking a nice warm scarf because of course the two scarves I brought with me for the cold wind were the ones with all the holes. I should have brought the winter scarf but I hadn't made a hat to go with that. So we will make a nice thick scarf with these two because they are larger than the other ones. What are they? They're 231 yards each so I might be able to get like a nice thick scarf and maybe a hat out of it too. We'll see what happens. So that was just a lovely little shop and not that little. Uh, it was a lot bigger than I expected. They had a ton of yarn and then those cute project bags uh, that you will have seen already. And they make their own project bags. They run between 80 and 100. Um, we also saw that cool shawl that was neat because it had like just one row of granny squares and it was like a pop of color but you know how you see all those projects with like a million granny squares and it's just granny square, granny square, granny square. And you're thinking, I'd like something a little subtler than that. So this was nice because it was a totally solid color except for the granny squares. And then the granny squares tied in the outside, the outside layer was the same color as the scarf. So I thought that was a really cool idea. And then it was just a granny stitch, a granny stripe stitch. And then my sister and I were debating whether it was double crochets or triple crochets. So I'm not sure. Take a look at the picture. Comment down below if you have a if you have an opinion on whether those were double crochets or triple crochets. So that's another good idea for a project. Um, maybe more of a scarf. I have seen those scarves that have a granny granny squares down one side, and then more of a granny stripe. So that's something to consider for future. I also got to go to uh, visit one of my YouTubers that I watch all the time. I'll link them below. They're called Bookshop Besties and they just opened a used bookstore. They, um, they purchased all the books and everything from the previous bookstore that was closing and they've been remodeling the space and making it look really nice. And I had been hoping to visit the bookstore 
when we uh, took that last trip because we were driving from Cayucos up to Napa for my husband's gig, but we had to leave super early in the morning and the store wasn't open by the time we got there. They're in Paso Robles. So since we got rerouted because of the road closure on the one, uh, we were able to stop by the bookstore. So I was very excited and fangirling out and nervous about what I was gonna say. Uh, I got to meet Carla. Cleo was not there, but Carla was wonderful. Thank you, Carla. Um, yeah, she just struck up a totally natural conversation with me. Commented on my ice cream cone bag. She knew the fabric. Turns out her mother runs the quilt shop in town. So I stopped by there as well. And I'll share some of that with you. I did not film in the quilt shop. Um, I, I don't know, I just didn't feel comfortable. But I did get some books at the bookstore. So as some of you may know, I have a book idea that I would someday like to write. I'm a little nervous about uh, writing again. I did take creative writing in college and it's something that I just haven't done a lot of since college, but I would love to write books. So that's the idea is children children's books uh, first and foremost, but I also got this wonderful idea. When we did the coast trip five years ago, we went all the way up to Mendocino, which is one of my favorite towns. And I was just thinking, ooh, it would be so cool to have like a cozy murder mystery series set up in Mendocino. So I had this whole idea. I re voice recorded myself talking about the characters and everything. So it kind of be a cross between Gilmore Girls and Murder, she wrote. And they had a whole cozy mystery section. So I got some of those. This one's called Lost Books and Old Bones, a Scottish Bookshop Mystery by Paige Shelton. That looks very interesting. And since cozy murder mysteries are like all the rage right now, I think it's a good topic to have. And then we were talking about this one, Designs to Die For by Jan Fields. And it's all about knitting and crochet. So I, of course I had to get that one. Um, oh, and she had a little embossed embosser I don't know if you can see that but very cool embossed with their logo for spare time books and then we got to talking about there's a whole quilt murder series like there's a whole subgenre of cozy murder mysteries that involve quilting so I was like cool okay so I found this one called the basement quilt by Anne Hazelwood it's a whole series, so I believe this is the first in the series. Um, it's called American Quilter Society Fiction Series, <laughs> so that's interesting. And then Carla pointed out that they have a local author who wrote a bunch of those mysteries. So this is Tumbling Blocks by Erlene Fowler. And so this one's a quilting mystery as well. It's so very cool. So their bookstore is called Spare Time and they are in Paso Robles if you want to stop by or I'll link their YouTube channel down below if you're interested in checking it out. It's just been neat to see the whole transformation of the store since they, since they got it. So she sent me over to her mom's store which is called Orange Dot Quilts um, which is just a block over from where she was, I got stuff all over me. And she's got a lot of the Ruby Star Society fabric that I love. So I picked this one out, which is really cool. She had a bright pink version of this too, but I don't know. The ochre just kind of goes with all of those other ochre colors that I have. And this is Camellia by, oh, Melanie Miller. Okay, so I've had Melanie Miller fabric before. It's very cute. I don't know what I'm doing with these, but I got a yard of each. And then this one is one I've been wanting for a while. So it's just a bunch of like airmail stamps. I've seen it before. It just says Bon Voyage Collection. So that's a bunch of airmail stamps. And I thought those kind of went together because it's got those oranges. And the next one is something I have been after for a while, which is mushroom fabric. And this is a very, very sophisticated mushroom fabric. We've got them in bell jars. And this is called Gardening Globe by Erin McManus. 
Oh, for cotton and steel. Of course I was attracted to it because it's cotton and steel fabric. And then I thought this one went wonderfully with it. I was looking for a hot pink to tie in with those mushrooms, but then I found this one, which has the dots, which is very cute. And that is Andover Fabrics Alice in Glass, another one of my favorite fabric designers. So very happy to meet meet her and talk to her about everything in Lemon Trees. She loved the name of my business uh, and talking to her about fabrics. I could have bought like one of each of the fabrics. She totally has my taste in fabrics. And she also had some charm packs. So these are five inch squares. I got a Christmas collection and she said these are both brand new collections. So this is like a very uh, country country cottage kind of vibe with with the subtle greens and reds so it's a little more country and then I got Kindred by One Canoe 2 I've seen their stuff before I've always wanted to try it so what I was thinking is is that I can make some of those tote bags remember how we made that tote bag for a Christmas present for my coworker last year um, I'm gonna make some more of those tote bags in solid colors but she also had a version of it with quilted squares. So I think I'm gonna try that. I wanted to do a Christmas one for myself just when I go Christmas shopping to carry on a Christmas shopping bag kind of thing. And then I figured this one would be cute as well. Maybe this one will be the one we sell. Just fun going there. Um, the hotel room, uh, if any of you are curious, the hotel room is quite expensive. It's their biggest room it's on the third floor which is a lot of stairs for me but you just can't beat that view I swear I took so much footage of that view <laughs> so I hope you don't get tired of it I will try and clip it down so that it's not too much for this video but um, I was thinking of starting another channel I have moment of Zen videos on this channel so I was thinking of, of starting another channel with all of that stuff so that I can explore that some more. I really like doing those and adding music to those and having some calming videos. But the YouTube algorithm doesn't like it when you stray from your normal content. So I might be better as a separate channel. So let me know. Pop in the comments if you're interested in that. Um, and maybe we'll get that going in a little bit. And with all the driving we've done, I'm on my last color for my Segway shawl. So that, that will probably be done pretty soon, and I can move on. We've still got our sweater to finish, but I can think about a different project. And I was a bad girl. I bought this yarn. Hobie was having a sale on all their cotton yarn, and I really loved these colors together. And I, so I'm going to make that lark's, lark's foot pattern. I'm going to make that lark's foot pattern that I used for this shawl. I'm going to make a whole blanket of that for the couch, so in those colors. So it's going to be a beautiful spring blanket, of which I do not have anything that's really for spring um, in my blanket rotation. So that'll be a fun project we can start. And that might be the next project I start, depending on when it gets here. It's leaving Copenhagen, so don't know how long it's going to take to get here. Uh, but we can start that when it shows up, although we still have the granny squares to make. I might take that back to work as my lunchtime project because it's really easy to do and fast and I just need to start cranking those out so we can finish off that blanket. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> so thank you for joining me this week. I hope you have fun traveling vicariously through me and I will see you back here next week for a crafting video when we get back into these project bags that we're making for the yard crawl. So I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Love you, friends. Bye.